We have a good youth choir, don't we? And they're growing in number. Good to have them here with us and leading out of music. We're going to move to our prayer time now. If you'll turn to the prayer list that you have, we do have a few names to add to that list. So if you'll look back there at the prayer request that we have, a new name that we need to add is Dorothy Dunlap. Uh, she's Robbie Evans' grandmother, and she's not doing well with a nursing home in Fort Gibson. So please keep her in your prayers, if you will, Dorothy Dunlap. Also, Nancy Atkins uh, has a new last name, Allen. Nancy Atkins Allen is at St. Francis Hospital in Tulsa with cancer. And she's asked us to pray for her, so she's in the uh, St. Francis in Tulsa Pink Hospital, and she does have cancer she's dealing with. We need to pray for the United Methodist Church. Our special call general conference will be this coming Saturday. So it's it's almost here. So let's do pray and they'll begin their meetings on Sunday of next week. So be in prayer all week long for our United Methodist Church as they move towards this special call conference. And then Bobby Rocks has been added to our list too. He's in ICU and we do need to pray for Bobby Rocks. I see you. Let me give you an update on some of the names that you do have on your list. Gail Robertson is out of the hospital. She's now back at the Country Gardens, and she is preparing for chemotherapy, but she's very weak right now. So she said, just keep her in your prayers, but don't come visit. She needs her energy level back up again, and her son is quite concerned about it right now. So keep her in your prayers, Gail Robertson. Julie Stokes was in the hospital. She is now back in her home. And she's going to have uh, Cherokee Nation Healthcare going by to help her. So please keep Julie Stokes in your prayers also. David Jones had successful rotator cuff surgery. Uh, very damaged, but now they've got him back to good placement. He's going to be pledging allegiance for quite some time, but uh, that's the way that you need to keep your arm in place until you get that rotator cuff working once again but he said thank you for your prayers and the doctor said things went very well the rest of the names on the list are still very important to us too uh, just keep them in your prayers if you will and if you have questions you're welcome to bring those by uh, just let me know in the uh, foyer out here let's move to our prayer time i'll be kneeling here at the altar if others would like to come and kneel at the altar you're welcome to do that at the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer, we we'll return back to our seats again. So let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much together with other believers and to lift our praises to you. Thank you that we joyfully adore you. And we praise your name and we thank you for all the many answered prayers that you've already given to us. Thank you for being there to encourage us along the way. Thank you for comforting us in our times of grief. And thank you for being one that gives us direction and fills our hearts with happiness and joy. Lord, whenever we come into your presence, we're mindful that we're sinners in need of forgiveness. And we thank you that the scriptures tell us that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive all of our sins in Christ Jesus. So Lord, we come confessing. We ask that you help us to be the people that you want us to be. Bless us and help us in this journey that we go together in learning who you are and how to live a Christian life. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit fill this place as we pray to you and touch each person that's here. We pray you touch us physically, mentally, and spiritually. And we pray for each family member on our heart today, those that are hurting, those that we know about that have special needs today, we pray you touch them, whatever need they have. And we know that there's no distance to prayer, so we pray that you'll touch them even now, wherever they're located. Give them strength, give them your love. Lord, we do pray for our world today as we continue to deal with strife around the world. We pray for the Korean Peninsula as we begin looking towards peace negotiations there and we thank you for being with our president and with that country leadership. Help us, Lord, to find ways and inroads to bring peace. We pray, Lord, for our conversations with China also as we deal with the tariff concerns. 
give us guidance and we pray, Lord, that there will be an ending and a resolution to this terror concerns. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to not have a governmental shutdown. We thank you for those that have worked together to bring a, an answer to the concerns being lifted up. We pray, Lord, that you'll help our Congress to continue to work together and that you'll help us all as a, a people of God to see you working in our government. Lord, we do pray for Venezuela as they continue to look for leadership, be with them, be with many countries that are still in war and conflict in Afghanistan and the Middle East, other countries that are going through difficulties at this time, give them your guidance. We certainly pray for our servicemen and women serving around the world. Keep them safe. Bring them safely back to their families once again. Lord, we do pray that you'll continue to be with our nation as we deal with concerns, the winter concerns up north right now. We pray that you'll be with them, those that are without electricity, be with them. We pray for those that are still devastated by tornadoes and hurricanes, that you'll be with them. We pray you continue to touch those that are being bothered by mudslides in California at this time. Put your hand upon your people. And Lord, we do thank you for our state of Oklahoma. Be with our new governor. We pray that you'll be with those in the legislature, that you'll help them as they look towards leadership and guidance for our state. Lord, we do pray for those names that have been lifted up, all those that are on our prayer request list. We do pray for Dorothy Dunlap, that you'll be with her. Nancy Atkins Allen, be with her in her cancer treatments. We pray also, Lord, for Gail Robertson as she looks towards you for the answers of her chemotherapy. And we pray for Julie Stokes. Thank you that she's out of the hospital. Be with Billy Ross. We pray that you bring him out of this ICU. Lord, we do pray for the United Methodist Church as we move towards this special called conference. We want your hand to be upon the delegates. Give them wisdom to know what best to do. And we look forward, Lord, to seeing how you help to resolve the concerns that we bring. Now, Lord, be with us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. The children's time is coming up now, and we will be leading our children as we sing from the hymn book on page 402, verse 1 of Lord, I want to be a Christian. Let's sing together and remain seated as the children.
us feel that we should be happy. Will we always be laughing and smiling? That's right, probably not. We aren't always able to control how we feel, and that's okay. How we feel changes. Maybe you can remember getting a gift for your birthday and how happy you were. Did that happiness continue on, or did you kind of lose that happiness? Maybe you can also remember a time when you were really sad. Maybe something happened that made you sad. Did that feeling last forever? Yeah. Um, we can tell ourselves, though, to be positive, right? That means that we want to look for the good things. Good things like being kind, helping others, being honest and trying our best. We can help to stay positive by taking care of ourselves. We ought to take care of our bodies by doing the right things and getting good rest and exercising. And we can take care of our minds by looking for positive friends and keeping good thoughts in our heads. And we can take care of our spirits by praying and studying God's Word. So what does that mean to stay positive? I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Maybe if you didn't do well on a test or in a ball game, what would be some things that maybe you could say that would be positive? How about, okay. All right. Maybe I didn't uh, make an A today, but I tried my best. I studied and I, I did pretty well, and next time I, maybe I'll do better. What if your mom and dad said no when you wanted to do something? How could you make that be positive? Is that a martyr? Yes, sir. Okay. Or maybe, you know, mom and dad are looking out for my best thing. And, and I just need to consider why they are saying no, and it's probably for the best. Okay, practicing being positive teaches us a lot of things. It teaches us to have faith and trust, to look for the good, and to have hope. Jesus told us to be happy. He told us not to worry. Jesus wants his children to have faith in his promises, and when we do, we can be happy. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the lives of these precious children. Help them to be happy and to trust in your promises. We are all God's children, so let us be joyous in his promise of eternal life. Guide our paths so that we may bring honor to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now time for Children's Church. If you'll go down the center aisle to the children's chapel upstairs, and if you'll turn down your hymn book to page 410, we'll remain seated as we sing verse 1 and 3 of 410.
be taking up the offering. I want to tell you about dinner church. We had 128 people at dinner church and continuing to grow. We do need more dessert. Yes, we do need more dessert because of the bigger crowd. And I, we're just so pleased with the ministry that's ongoing there. One name I forgot to mention for the prayer time was Diane Cox Crawford. Our her husband wrote in and said she's been ill for a number of weeks and she asked for our prayers. And so let's be sure to keep Diane Cox Crawford in your prayers. Sometimes the preacher remembers those things and forgets to write them down, okay? But at least I remember before the service was over, so that's very good. We do want to invite our ushers now down the aisle and let's have prayer as they come. Oh Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to give back to you from our many blessings. So thank you, Lord. And bless this offering now for its use not only here in the local church, but in the community. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
verse 17 through 26. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, beginning with verse 17. Jesus came down from the mountain with them and stood in a large area of level ground. And a great company of disciples and a huge crowd of people from all around Judea and Jerusalem and the area around Tyre and Sidon joined him there. They came to hear him to be healed from their diseases, and those bothered by unclean spirits were healed. The whole crowd wanted to touch him because power was going out from him, and he was healing everyone. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor, because God's kingdom is yours. Happy are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Happy are you, when, you who weep now, because you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you and reject you, insult you and condemn your name as evil because of the human one. Rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because you have a great reward in heaven. Their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich because you already have received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now because you will be hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when all speak well of you. Their ancestors did the same thing to the false prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our hands for prayer. Almighty God, we do pray that you'll speak to us and help us to understand this scripture which has puzzled so many over time. Bless us now as we address this message in Jesus' name. Amen. I find it interesting that this is the same parable, the same words that Jesus says, happy or blessed. He says that also in Matthew's Gospel. Have you noticed that? In the Sermon on the Mount is what it's called in Matthew's Gospel. And now we have Luke saying that Jesus was on the plain. And he was sharing the message of the Beatitudes. Blessed are they, or happier are those who this, do this or that. And it's interesting that, which was it? Was it on the mountaintop or was it on the plains? Well, I think Jesus was an accommodating preacher that he may have used the same message more than once. And he could have been on the mountaintop and he could have been on the plains sharing the same message. But I like the way Luke has the gospel message. Because in Luke's gospel, it finishes out. He's already been healing a number of folks. A number of folks have come his way. He's been preaching to numerous folks, healing and casting out demons. And then it was after this that Jesus said to his disciples, look at all these people. They're poor. But God is doing something for them. God's kingdom is for them. He looked at those people that were all gathered around him. Look at these who are hungry. They're going to be satisfied because they're coming in the right place. They're going to be satisfied. Look at these who weep. And I'm sure there were people weeping that said, I've, I've been hurting so long. My suffering is so long. And I'm coming to you, Jesus, as my last resource. He says, look at those people who are weeping. They're going to be laughing. Because they're going to say, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm well. And then have you those people who hate you and reject you and insult you and condemn you because of the evil one. Because rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because your reward is in heaven. You see how I think that the gospel written in Luke helps us to better understand these words of Jesus of saying, blessed are they who are poor, blessed are they who are hungry. I read a story as I was preparing for the sermon this week about a family who sold everything to pay the bills and to put food on the table. Everything was out of the household. But a burglar still broke in one night when the family was gone. The door was knocked off its hinges and so the police officer said, well, what did the burglar get? And the head of the household shook their head and said, practice. They just got practice. That's all they got. It's not so it's it's not easy being poor, is it? And yet Jesus says in this passage, blessed are the poor. 
Jesus kept his listeners always off of balance. Have you noticed that? Whenever Jesus would speak, he would kind of knock you off balance. He would always say the unexpected. He would always praise those that were despised by others. He would even say to Zacchaeus, I know you're a tax collector, but come on down. I'm going to your house. And they were thinking, where did this come from? Where did this come from? So Jesus was always doing this. And he said to them, not only this, but he said, blessed are you who give to give than to receive. Blessed are you who give more than you are to receive. And then he said, whoever wants to lose his life, her life, will, and loses it for me, will save it. You know, it's been 2,000 years later, and we're still trying to wrestle with what this passage means. What is its exact meaning, and how does it apply to my life? It's called the Beatitudes because, the Beatitudes found both in Matthew and Luke, because Beatitudes means blessed. And so the attitudes is blessings. And in some passages, some versions of the Bible, it says, blessed are you. Uh, I like the wording, happy are you, as Jesus is saying here in this passage. But does it really help us to change the word from blessed to happy when Jesus says, you're happy if you're poor? You're happy if you are hungry. You're happy if you're downhearted. You're happy if you're hated. You're happy if you're persecuted. I think many of us would say, thanks, but no thanks, I don't want that. That's not for me. But we don't want to be poor, we want to be rich. When we look for a role model, we're not looking at the man who's begging for money on the street, are we? We're looking for the people that have money, the people that have big cars, that have the nice homes. And sometimes we really do feel bad, we feel like the whole world is against us. There was a comedian writer, Robert Orban, who had a great line in one of his comedy skits. He said, sometimes I get the feeling that the whole world is against me, but deep down I know that can't be true. Some of those small countries are neutral. I thought that was quite an interesting comment. Some of those countries are neutral, so I know they can't be against me. J.B. Phillips has a parody of Jesus' words of the beloved words that we just read. He said, happy are the pushers, for they get on in the world. Happy are the hard boils, for they never let life hurt them. Happy are those who complain, for they get their own way in the end. Happy are the blasé, for they never worry about their sins. Happy are the slave drivers, for they get results. Happy are the knowledgeable people, for they know their way around. Happy are the troublemakers, for they make people take notice of them. That's an interesting way of putting those words of Jesus together. But what was Jesus talking about? He was talking about happiness. Was he just a dewy-eyed dreamer? Did, was he out of touch with the world? I don't think so. Thornton Wilder's Heaven's My Destination play is a comical play about a man who decides to put the whole Sermon on Mount into practice. And in one scene of the play, he refuses to take interest on his savings account because he does not believe in usury. And so he's standing there talking to the teller about not wanting to take the money from the bank and concerned about this. And so some other customers are listening in to this customer and the teller and they're thinking, oh, this bank has got problems. And so they start withdrawing their money from the bank and the bank nearly collapses from that one conversation that they heard on this side. Philip Yancey, teaching a class of the Beatitudes, he decided to incorporate the video clip of Cecil B. DeMille's video of, of King of Kings. And in watching this televised speech, he also saw on his television screen General Norman Schwarzkopf, who had just got back from war, and a, a very successful conflict that he led. And he was noticing the difference between what was going on in Cecil B. DeMille's movie of Jesus and Norman Schwarzkopf and what he was saying. Jesus was saying, blessed are you when you're poor in spirit and when you're suffering. General Schwarzkopf was extolling the virtues of bigness, strength, power, and force. And he says, look at the distinction between these two, how different they are. If we look at our first sermon note today, I think that what we
we need to realize is our happiness is not dependent on our outward circumstances. Happiness comes from within. Happiness comes from within us. We need to realize that today. When people look for happiness elsewhere, they are less happy rather than more happy. Joseph Sisu uh, talks about visiting a luxurious estate, one of the most luxurious in the America, and with in the house were at the Italian fireplaces, Belgian tapestries, oriental rugs, rare paintings. And Sisu says to his friend, how happy the people must have been who lived here. And his friend says they weren't happy at all. They were millionaires, but they were husband and wife, and they never spoke to each other. This place was a hotbed of hatred, the friend says. They had no love for God and no love for one another. Where are you going to look for happiness? Where am I going to look for happiness? Some of us look for our work to be a place of happiness for us, and that is where we put all of our happiness until we lose our job, until our, our job is downsized, until things change in the economy, and suddenly we lose that place of happiness, and we think, well, I guess I shouldn't have put my happiness there. There's some that put their happiness in their family, and that's a good place for us to put our happiness in our family, but Sometimes our family will let us down. Sometimes there will be things that happen. Both can change and the happiness may not be there. A spouse may bring us great joy in our lives, but also a spouse can break our hearts. So can our children. They can bring us great joy, but at times our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, that happiness is just not there anymore and it breaks our hearts. The second point of our sermon message today is when we look elsewhere for the totality of our happiness, we will end up less happy rather than more happy. We're going to end up less happy than more happy if we're looking elsewhere for the totality of our happiness. We need to look for it in one place. We must acknowledge that according to Christ's plan that's in the scripture for us today, that we would have the zest for living if we had no bounds at all, if we lived the way Jesus tells us to live. We would spend less time focusing on ourselves and much more focused on God and on other people. I love that that Ron Sparkle here down the street had the word joy written on their side just recently. J-O-Y, and they looked at J meaning Jesus, O meaning others, and the Y meaning yourself. And that was the order that we ought to be living in this world today. Jesus first, others second, and ourselves last. What would happen if the world would live that way? I think Jesus is trying to tell us to live that way. Wouldn't it be a happier place if we were not always focused on me, 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 but we're focused on you, God, and focused on other people too? If we live our lives with the belief that the greatest love values or for God and for others, I think our world would change for sure. In 1989, the columnist Nick Clooney decided that he'd like to do the modern day Huck Finn thing. He wanted someone else to write his column for him for a while in his newspaper. So he invited a variety of local celebrities in Kentucky and Ohio to send in their ideas on a column about epitaphs out on the tombstone. What would these famous men and women want written on their tombstone? He was surprised by the wit and the sincerity of the various responses. I heard Joe Fisher, a weatherman, wrote on his epitaph for himself. He wanted the mind of Plato, his heart and soul of Socrates, but his life was more a tribute to old mediocrities. Paul Newell, the editor of the Cincinnati Post, couldn't make up his mind about what he would want on his tombstone until he and his family went away on a weekend trip. When he returned, Paul knew exactly what he wanted as his epitaph, and he reflected on the importance of his family life. He chose his in two simple words, he cared, he cared. And then another one that was sweetly whimsical and message that came from Charles Mitchell, a former head of the Taft Broadcasting Company. His epitaph read this way, Dear God, 
Thanks for letting me visit. I had a wonderful time. That's a nice one, isn't it? Dear God, thank you for letting me visit. I had a wonderful time. Jesus, I think, is trying to say to us that if we really want lasting happiness, it's not found in wealth. It's not found in a full stomach. It's not found in the esteem of our friends looking up to us. It's not even found in our family relationships. The only satisfying relationship is with Jesus Christ. And that is the third point of our sermon message today. There is only one source of true and complete happiness today. Being a believer in Jesus Christ brings happiness to us. That doesn't mean that life is always going to be perfect. There's still going to be those bumps in the road. We're still going to have debt to deal with. We're still going to have problems to deal with. But we have someone to turn to. Someone that will give us inspiration. Somebody that will give us wisdom to know that we are at least headed the right way. We're headed to heaven. When I was in Costa Rica many years ago with a volunteer missions team, I found that these people were focused. They were so happy in worship and they had lost so much. We had gone there to help rebuild homes that had been flooded, that had been earthquake had come, knocked their house off the stilts that they were on. And then right after the houses were down on the ground, the flood came in and wiped out the rest of it. And we went to visit to build new homes for them, concrete homes that would be stabilized in this area. And we went to church with them and they were so happy. They were so happy and their focus was on something different. I thought, there's so devastation all around us. Why were they so happy? And they said their happiness is in the Lord. It's not on the environment around them, but it was on the Lord. And the fact that someday they were going to go back and be with the Lord again. And there is a heavenly place for them. And it's already ready. And there's no flooding, no earthquake anymore up there. There's celebration. So today I want us to think about what it is that makes us happy. So for just a moment, let's bow our heads and just think about those things that make us happy in life today. Lord, we thank you for those times when our work makes us happy or our family makes us happy. There are many other things that make us happy. Our grandchildren, children, great-grandchildren, our church that makes us happy, but we know that's not the lasting happiness. That it only comes from you when we truly trust in you and let you fill us to the full. So Lord, we thank you that you took time right after you healed so many people. You brought the message of grace and truth to the people and then you fed them. And you brought the happiness that is a long-lasting happiness. Lord, for many of us today, we need that happiness in our life. We need, once again, that restoration of the joy that we had in our salvation. David even says it in the scripture, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And Lord, quite frankly, there are many of us today that are not really joyful, even though we had salvation come many years ago. Help us once again to know what we have in you. Help us to know the joy that only comes from you. Help us to know the peace that only comes from you. And help us to know that hope and love that comes from you. I thank you for each person here, for this message is for them, for me. As we look to you, help us to be blessed. Help us to find that happiness that only you can bring. And it's because we trust in you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to join our church, you're welcome to come forward as we sing our closing hymn. It's number 732. Come we that love the Lord. Stay together as we sing this hymn.
so that they may know who you are. Bless you, Jesus, for coming into our life and to our world. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.